<laughs> wow. Did I interrupt anything? I'm sorry. Hi, everybody. Hey. Welcome to the last day of animation. Aww. Yeah, I know. It sucks. Uh, but uh, I'd like to welcome you guys to the to the direct, to the We Are Goku panel with Miss Nakazawa. No. Sorry, Nozawa Sensei, excuse me what I'm saying, and, and uh, John Simmel, Thank you. and uh, they are Goku. Uh, <laughs> oh, we have a media moderator? To oh, yes, yes, the moderator. Me, yeah. I'm the moderator. <laughs> so, do you guys want to do anything? Uh, or not, we can ask her what she'd like to do as well. And Whatever's fine. Whatever's fine. Goku says whatever's fine, that's fine. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> raise your hands, everybody. Hello. 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 Oh, oh, that's her white number. Oh, yeah, that's my story. That's how I was like, I was like, why am I next to the translator? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> my mic. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I think he, yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking. I was like, why am I? <laughs> I speak English. Oh. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. That's working. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you so much for coming, both of you. Uh, my question was uh, I have two. One was for Nazawa and uh, how she enjoyed her first stay uh, at a con in the United States. And the second one, just completely off, um, if either of you have ever cosplayed with her. And what, uh, if you did, I want to know if uh, you've ever worn like the actual E of Goku. <laughs> もう私は最高です。ここに来て。もう朝からすごく朝早く起きて日の出から見てます。すごくいいところです。で、コスプレはしたことないです。well, it's been great coming here to the amusement. I get up early in the morning with the sun and enjoy the full day. And uh, as for cosplay, um, I've never done cosplay. <laughs> um, what was the question? No. <laughs> I remember the that second part. I, uh, I've never cosplayed as Goku except for the fact that my girlfriend went cosplayed as uh, Chi Chi for Halloween and I just wore the orange Goku shirt. Um, and then tried to make Goku y faces. Uh, the other part was, uh, what was it? Uh, more direct, sorry, yeah, because she's, yeah. Oh, here, well, I've very much enjoyed my stay uh, here in Raleigh, and uh, I'm definitely going to come back if they'll invite me, absolutely. And, uh, <laughs> this, uh, our amazement has been truly an amazing, and um, <laughs> no, seriously, and the beds in the tar really comfortable and that's and you guys are amazing so not in that order you guys are amazing first um i'm gonna put my foot out of my mouth now and let for the next question okay <laughs> i got a question okay Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Sean, yes, question for you. Um, yeah, as in the Japanese version, um, Asuka Nazawa plays Goku in Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, we hear that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Have you considered, you know, have, has it ever crossed your mind? I don't want to eat some other people. Well, I, that's not a choice okay. that um, I'm allowed to make. Uh, and, and I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Nazawa Ms. Uh, what. Uh, I was what I've heard versus the truth. In America, um, 
usually women play boys' voices, and then as they age, we switch to men. I have always heard that it is uh, traditional in, in Japan for if you start with a character's voice to continue it, but I don't know if that's true or not. Um, I, since I have the, have the yeah, you know, have her right here, we can ask. Um, uh, I started playing Goku when he was about 16 uh, in, Go in Dragon Ball. Um, my voice, I'm a baritone, uh, and I have done some little kid voices in Pokemon before, but I don't know that my voice is really appropriate for pre-puberty high uh, voice. Because it would be way up, you know, be really high, and, and, and they typically like to use, I mean, Bart Simpson's played by a woman, uh, and that's how we do it, and, and, and I would love to know what, what that is. It could be just because, you know, she's such an awesome actress, she can do both, so, <laughs> as my guess. Um, and yeah, that was. Can we? I was actually asking kind of a question for her as well. Um, is it what? Is it traditional in Japan when you start off with the women playing a boy's voice to carry that into adulthood? And is that true for all uh, anime characters, or is it just because you're so awesome, or both? <laughs> Extraordinarily convincing as a man, despite the fact that uh, she's obviously a woman. I, I think it's very, very convincing. <laughs> and I can feel her channeling the spirit of Goku when she does the voice. It's when you're sitting next to her. It's really, really. Uh, <laughs> it's really, really cool. <laughs> I don't know what the Japanese word is for cool, but I gotta learn it. <laughs> This is a question for both of you. What uh, kind of work and preparation went into uh, creating Goku's voice?で、中間にマイクがある。で、私は自分の席から立ち上がってマイクの前に行くまでにゴクーの絵を見てたらその中にずっと入ってって、そのままずっとゴクーに来て、やって、今現在もそれでやってますけど、クレームは一度もないですね
と履いたことないです。And, um, I've never worn a skirt recording Goku. <laughs> You're making me an asshole. So Super Saiyan 3,、um, a lot of people think I passed out for that. That's not true. <laughs> and I'm not saying that to brag because I did pass out during Super Saiyan 4.、Um, and that was due to a lack of sleep and lack of proper diet or exercise. And I was very tired. And I also didn't calculate the amount of air I needed for、uh, the aperture of the vocal cords.、Uh, for Super Saiyan 3,、um, I had to watch it first to make sure because you have to calculate how much air you have. And then it's just. And you're holding it up, and you're boop, boop, you hear the three beeps, and it's like, yeah, and you're watching it, watching it, keep going, keep going, keep going. You gotta you know, really calculate so you don't sound like you run out of air, and it has to match the animation, and then usually you're extremely exhausted afterwards. So,、uh, yeah, Super Saiyan 3 was, yeah. There is an outtake where I bust into an, a Bon Jovi lick.、Um, <laughs> uh, um, I, I actually have a question for Ms. Nazal. <laughs> Um, so, obviously,、um, when you play Goku as a little boy, I assume they auditioned many women.、Um, and you said it was a first for them to、uh, keep you on as adult Goku. Were they considering bringing in a man and then you had to prove yourself? Or, they felt, or did they feel like you were just the character so much so? I mean, how would they know that you could do the man's voice?、Um, and were you worried that maybe. You would be replaced as adult, or did you, you know, know that you had it? And, and did they come to you and say, Look, we, we don't know if you, we want you to do this, but we want you to try it? What happened with that? It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> And、uh, normally、uh, when I、uh, do the voice of, of a boy character and when that character、uh, goes in, grows into an adult, there is a change of cast. And I thought that would be the case of Goku too, and I thought that would be a little sad. Uh, but、um, I think the producer, the director,、um, were, were pretty much in agreement to continue、uh, casting me. And、uh, also, Akira Toriyama said、uh, it's a go. So、um, I was very happy that,、uh, that I got continued to, ca to be cast、uh, for Adult Goku. Fantastic. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> and I was just thinking that we have the opportunity to have both of you here. 
would it be awesome if you could be the same person? And so this question is directed at Masako-san. Would you be willing to do the fusion dance with Sean? <laughs> <laughs> As much as I admire <laughs> and I'm trying to figure out if you're a pervert or not. No. Okay. Fusion Ha! <laughs> I think so. Yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah. Okay. Um, just want to say it's a huge honor and privilege to get to see you all here. please. Uh, can you hear uh, what he's saying all the way in the back of the room? Can you hear me? Good point, Taka. Okay. Can you hear me when I'm facing this way? Uh, <laughs> it's a huge honor to get to be, uh, get to see you all here. Welcome to Raleigh. Uh, I just wanted to ask, is there like any funny or favorite moments y'all had while recording the voices? In or I'll go her go first because I'm actually really curious. <laughs> <laughs> <笑>あの、<笑> 全員で極チームのファミリーの方はもうフリーザに対して何なのって感じですぐに言います。ちょっとやめてよ。Well, uh, since uh, we've been together as a cast for so long, uh, we do get along as a, as good friends, so we're always having fun. Uh, so, say uh, we have Frieza in the studio on a particular day. Uh, all of all of us in the Goku family would bunch up together and uh, rag on him, saying, "What are you doing?" <laughs> Um, we also have been in this not as long as they have, obviously, but uh, we're very good friends. Most of us, I think, all of us. I don't know what people say about me behind my back, but <laughs> um, we do. There's a lot of outtakes that are funny. I, I, were you asking about that, or just whether or not we have fun together? <laughs> I mean, my favorite moments are the outtakes. Um, and uh, uh, Chris is a really fun director to work with. The voice of Vegeta uh, Piccolo is the director. <clears throat> and he's very, he's a prankster. He played a prank on me for over a year with a kazoo hidden in my hotel room. <laughs> and I thought someone, the hotel staff put there, and then they had a recorder in there with someone saying in Spanish, the kazoo is here, the kazoo is everywhere, I'm sorry. And I thought that I was like, wow, solving a mystery. And, he, and that prank lasted over a year until he slipped up on a panel and somebody posted it on my Twitter. Uh, so, that was fun. <laughs> We just did some outtakes in Kai where the music sounded like uh, George Michael's Faith and they're walking along and the music's going dun, 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 and Chris starts going to Piccolo's voice to the picture. Oh, I guess it would be nice. <laughs> and then I had Goku to everybody, but it didn't fit with the rhythm at all because the flat. And so it makes it even funnier because Goku would probably be clueless to a rhythm of that kind. <laughs> uh, stuff like that. <laughs> Unthinkable in Japan. Mosco, <laughs> uh, it's incredible to see you and meet you. Uh, Sean, it's incredible too. Uh, because Dragon Ball is such an incredibly large franchise, I was wondering if you've ever had to turn down the role because you played Goku and you thought that would be good for fans to see. And also, how's that? Um, affected your career in other aspects that uh, caused you to be typecast in uh, certain areas and influenced, I guess, how you behave in public, like maybe you will, I guess, drink as much in public or something. <laughs> 
Because go to drink sometimes. Well, uh, there ha for me, uh, there hasn't been anything of that sort, and uh, in terms of uh, uh, coming up with uh, lines that would not would be unbecoming of Goku, um, I would uh, offer my opinion to, to the director saying uh, Goku wouldn't say that, and uh, he would be the one uh, making changes and uh, adopting my uh, idea about how the character should be. Um, yeah. As far as being typecast, uh, my contract does not permit me to uh, use the voice of Goku in association with any other character called Goku. However, I can use that voice any way I want. And when I did Kappa Mikey, um, I chose, they actually cast me partly, be I still had to audition, but they cast me partly because I played Goku, and uh, Gonard's voice is a parody of uh, Goku. Uh, and then his on-screen, when they're in the show, is a parody of a mixture of Vegeta and Piccolo to be the bad guy. Uh, the, that whole thing is supposed to be um, uh, that. Uh, I, I also, I, I know Moscow plays mainly hero roles, if only hero roles. Um, I started out with hero roles, but then I got good at monster voices and bad guy voices. They're talking like this and stuff. And so they kept casting me that way and not in hero voices because a lot of people can't do that. And so I could do that, but they hurt. And I still wanted to play more hero roles uh, because I like using that part of my voice. Um, and oftentimes they would say, um, you know, it's, it, oh, that's too much like Goku, or like this, or whatever. Sometimes they don't care because I'm working for a different company or a different studio. Um, but it hasn't affected me in terms of uh, getting work. Uh, it's actually helped just because I play the role. They think, well, if you've got a lead on this, you know, you must be good at what you do. And so we give me an audition. Uh, but yeah, that's hope that answers your question. And um, I have done uh, villain, villainous characters as well, oh, usually, good. usually as witches. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious, um, is there anything about Goku or anything that happened to Goku in the series that you would change in the first thing? Why? Uh, when I walk into the studio, I, 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 I uh, become Goku the character, uh, so, I would, uh, so um, I've never thought about how the story would be otherwise. I would have to agree for the most part, other than the fact that we oftentimes joke about uh, Goku not being the best father. <laughs> <laughs> Of, uh, absenteeism. <laughs> However, he is saving the world, so um, <laughs> uh, you know I don't. I, I, he's very self-sacrificial, so you know it's hard to. You want to go? No, don't leave your family and kill yourself. But you know he's got it for the greater good. And again, uh, like she was saying, I played the character for so long. When I see parts of the script that I don't think is uh, Goku-like, they will let, take my opinion. Oftentimes. Uh, and if it sounds selfish, I, if anytime I see it sounds selfish, I don't feel Goku is selfish. So I will say I don't think Goku would say that. Or if it's about ego, or if it's about, um, you know, something that is not a becoming virtue, I, I'll see that in the script sometimes. And I think the translator might have gotten it uh, wrong, or the script adapter usually is the one who's gotten it wrong. 
and they'll usually take my advice, you know, and I hope I'm right. I mean, I've got her here, so I hope she can tell me if I'm right or not. <laughs> I've always wanted to preserve, I was disappointed with the first Dragon Ball Z scripts because they, they were a little bit watered down, and the reason I'm such a big fan of Kai is because we're trying to keep it exactly like the Japanese, um, and I think it makes the story deeper and richer. In fact, I didn't realize how awesome and powerful the story was in Z until we got to Kai, and then I was like, oh, this is why Goku's relationship is this way. This is why, you know, there's this reason is happening for this, versus stupid things that producers had come up with they thought would appeal to an American audience. So I was not, you know, I didn't have any power at that time, and the people who are in charge now, I think, make much better decisions in America, so. Uh, there would be some things that are lost in translation for the uh, when it crosses the ocean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's disappointing, and that, that's why I always, when I was writing, uh, when I was writing a script adaptation for a different anime, I was always on the phone with the translator, trying to really get the deepest meaning possible. Because a lot of times they would make a. a I'm very good with English language in terms of understanding nuances of meaning, and I was like, well, does it really mean this word, or is, is that, and then I would ask several questions to really hone in on the meaning of a particular adjective, and oftentimes it was just a word that the translator had picked that was the most convenient word, and then they would change it, and I'm like, well, that word means something very different and implies something very different than this word, um, and I didn't always have that honor or privilege, uh, and I drove a lot of translators crazy, um, but, uh, uh, I feel like since there's a translator here, I'm shifting into my uh, bad English dub voice. You will not defeat me. Um, <laughs> I'm your father. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm joking. Um, well, uh, Jeff? I'm right here. Wait, oh. Right here oh, yes, okay, good. Um, I kind of talked to you this yesterday uh, about other languages of Goku, so if you guys were given a chance um, would you meet the other voice actors of Goku from other foreign languages, like Spanish, French, or German? I only care about her, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I met uh, the French Dragon Ball cast members. <laughs> Uh, French Goku is also a woman. Ah! <laughs> I've heard that uh, he gets uh, cast 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 by a uh, male voice actor for adult Goku, but I've never I haven't met the adult Goku voice actor. I wonder if they have coffee and cigarettes in the booth in the French room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally French stereotype, sorry. I was hanging out with a French guy all weekend, so. Well, that would not happen in Japan. <laughs> But, I, but it's probably only in uh, Japan where the adult Goku is uh, still cast by a uh, woman. Mm. Yeah. Probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, there's Jeff. Uh, hello. Hello. Th thank you again for coming here. Um, I have a question for both of you. Um, besides the character Goku, um, is there a character in Dragon Ball Z that you have as your personal favorite? Well, uh, the first uh, character that Goku encounters is Bulma, so I am very fond of her, but uh, in Dragon Ball Z, uh, the one who trains uh, Gohan, uh, Piccolo, is my favorite. I'm not 
playing copycat. I have been a big Piccolo fan for years. Um, <laughs> and I like bubbles. <laughs> you know, because like, it's a monkey. <laughs> I just <laughs> bubbles. I have bubbles. Um, I have an autographed Piccolo action figure on my mantle from Chris Abbott. Um, and I wish I forgot to bring it with me to have Toshio sign it, <laughs> which was completely stupid. <laughs> um, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a big Piccolo fan. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Um, my question is about Goku's uh, inner character. Everyone in this room has a connection with Goku in some way. He's a very meaningful and inspiring character in a lot of different ways, across generations and across the entire world. And I'd like to ask you, why or how Goku is so inspiring and so meaningful and so many で、the way I uh, see Goku's character is that uh, he's someone uh, always uh, cheerful, and uh, it's the light side of life that he looks at. And um, he does not train for the benefit of others. He uh, cons uh, he always trains uh, for his to improve himself. Uh, but whenever there's evil in the world, uh, he wants he, he he goes up to stand up against uh, against evil. And um, world peace is uh, what some something that uh, Goku always desires, and um, he wants to always have a, a world that's uh, cheerful and and then fun. And, uh, I think that's uh, that's how I see uh, Goku. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he never uh, seeks to be the center of attention. Um, I, I concur 100% with what she's saying. Um, absolutely, I don't. You know, I don't know where Akira Toriyama draws his inspiration per se. I, I have heard that uh, it's the story of the Great Journey West uh, and the Monkey King, inspired from that. Perhaps is that true? Um, and uh, like many classical stories, such as the ancient Greek stories, uh, Asia also has its classic thousands and thousands of year old tales that get clothed in modern ways, such as animation. And the reason they stick around for thousands of years, I think, is because they appeal to so many of our, our own desires to be better uh, people. Um, otherwise, I think we'd get sick of them or we'd get tired of them and we wouldn't tell that story over and over generation after generation. And, or people like Akira Toriyama wouldn't think, oh, this would be a great story to tell or express or an ideal to express because you know, it, would, it wouldn't stand the test of time. So um, I think there are some uh, Zen influences and uh, the, in terms of beginner's mind and, and being positive and, uh, uh, you know, always in, in destroying evil within yourself and, in, you know, in the world. So I basically concur with what she's saying. I, I would be curious to see her and Akira Toyama have uh, coffee and what they would talk about <laughs> in terms of the character. <laughs> And uh, Akira Toriyama has said that uh, he loves the story of the Monkey King, the Journey West, and he also loves uh, Kung Fu. That's good to know, yeah. yeah. I'm learning so much here today, after 13 years of playing Goku, so... <laughs> uh, pretty awesome. One by three 
was. Yeah, okay. I think I get it for everybody when I say, oh my god, my child's in right here. Anyways, right? <laughs> <laughs> as much as possible. Um, when playing Son Goku, what aspects of your personal life have you drawn on? For example, what would Goku do? <laughs> and if you can introduce yourself as Goku, I'd like to thank <laughs> that was, oh yeah, I'm Goku. I might be uh, Masako Nozawa, but I'm Goku. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to follow that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I probably have uh, gone through situations like that unconsciously, uh, but I think my uh, personal character is very similar to Goku's. Um, uh, for me, you know, the thematic material for Goku, uh, his basic theme for me is other than the aspects of being pure of heart is, you know, never giving up. You know, when the chips are down, shit hits the fan, your friends are dead, what are you going to do? Uh, and that's, you know, my life in that situation. Yeah, definitely, especially now in my career. Um, in the beginning, not so much, but I'm doing it for so long and I get so much incredible feedback from you all. I, I always think, you know, here I am playing Goku and inspiring people, and if I give up now, what will people think? You know, who, you know, so you guys are kind of affecting me. Whether or not I know you personally, um, and when I got cast, my uh, uh, my producer said, uh, "I didn't cast you because you sound like Goku, but you do. Uh, I cast you because you are Goku." And I did not really understand that at the time. And uh, you know, I, I, I can be very naive <laughs> like that. Um, so I think you you know having that spirit uh, really helps. Uh, and uh, I definitely can feel it with her, so. <laughs> and we're down to the last question. I've, and I've been saving this one. Okay. Because it's a really good one. Oh, excellent. Hi. Okay, so my question's for both of you. Um, speaking as part of the generation that grew up watching this with my dad, um, and then having to pre-order the boxes as they came out from VHS and she had all the pictures perfectly lined up and you weren't missing anything. Now having a niece and a nephew, he's repeating that tradition and he's sitting them down and they're watching Dragon Ball and working into Dragon Ball Z. Any particular moment that you remember making that connection with a child when they realize you're that hero? Oh. Oh. the last part of the question. Any particular time that you remember a child making that connection? Because like, you know, you can take a kid to Disney World and they can see, oh, it's Mickey, but like that moment whenever they hear your voice and they hear you say that role and they realize it's you, you're that hero. And, uh,
うん、子供さんはねあの私はね電車の中でよく見るのがきっと子供なりに嫌な人がいるんだと思うんですよ前にそうするとカメハメハを打ってるんですよ声は出さないんだけどってだからああの子供さんの中でもすごく浸透してるんだなって思うしあのプレゼントをよくファンレターって言うんですけどお手紙いただくんですねで自分の,あの宝物を私にく,くれるんですよ悟空にあげるって言ってその宝物が何かなと思うと子供さんには宝物なんですけどこういうもののキャップが多いんですよ牛乳の蓋とかだからお子さんの中でも浸透してて私はとっても嬉しいし今日あの今質問なさった方緑の髪してるじゃないですかだからあどっかの世界から均等に乗ってこいきたのかななんて思いながら聞いてましたね。Uh, when it comes to children, I very much、uh, see that often、uh, when,、uh, when I'm riding the train. And、uh, as kids, they must have someone that they really、uh, do not like, despise. That. And、uh, I can tell because they are silently、uh, uh, shooting Kamehameha at them. They don't voice it, <laughs> but they go through the full gesture. So, I know. And, uh, and uh, also, Uh, a lot of our fans,、uh, including children,、uh, send me fan mail. And、um, a lot of children, when they do that,、uh, send me their、uh, treasure. And、um, I know that it's precious for them and in, in their own world. And、uh, for a lot of them, it tend, turns out to be bottle caps. And so they send me bottle caps、uh, of their collections,、uh, milk hogs, and those other things. And,、um, And, and, and the person、uh, who asked, me, who asked uh, us uh, the question,、uh, I noticed、uh, you have green hair. You must have come from the land of the pure hearted、uh, in the Kinto <laughs> yourself, and that's what I was、uh, imagining. Thank you. <laughs> I have a similar experience.、Um, well, there's a couple things. Uh, when I moved to New York, I was afraid I'd be recast.、Um, I wasn't sure if I ever expected to have children.、Uh, and fun. Oh, hello. I lost my mic. Oh, was it? Oh, wait, was it? Okay, good. And Funimation,、uh, uh, I was afraid I'd be recast. And so、um, I flew back to New York to complete the role. I lied to them and told them I was living by coastally so that I could complete the entire series. Uh, for my sister's children,、uh, and, and so that any children watching it would have、uh, one voice in English for the entire thing.、Um, uh, <laughs> um, they treat us better, and they, you know, they pay for flights now,、uh, but this is back in the early days.、Um, I also get emails, oftentimes, my, well, there are two things. My favorite things are when I get emails from.、Uh, People who have watched the show together and it was a bonding experience, and then they might have lost someone in the Iraq War, and so every time they hear the voice, you know, it, it brings back a memory that's pleasurable for them, you know.、Uh, that means a lot to me. The other thing, my favorite thing is, you know, obviously my natural speaking voice is not quite in Goku, and I'll meet a little kid, and they, they have this flat look on their face, and then I do the voice, and it just activates something, and they just <laughs> light up. <laughs> It's worth everything in the world. It's, it's, that's, it's amazing. Yeah, so yeah, I love that experience.、Yeah. Like, again, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out today. Thank you. And please, one more huge round of applause.
Oh, I was trying to take a picture. It has to be on. Uh, not recording or something. Aww. Oh.